please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. And of Steel movie thoughts. Now, the... I suppose I will start with some of the... I, I will save my terrible jokes for a little later, actually. I will start with some of the things that felt a little off. Let's start with the questionable science fiction. It's maybe more fiction than, than science in, the, in this case. When you have the two phantom engines that if they... That they they're both capable of traveling via wormhole, as, as far as I understood, they can travel very fast to different worlds. If the two of them collapse, co collide with each other, it forms a black hole, and this black hole will last only until all of both of these engines and you know, the whole thing is sucked into it. And then, then, yeah, then it'll just close up nicely and suck nothing else. Yeah, I, I don't completely follow that. I don't quite see why two wormhole things colliding would necessarily lead to a black hole. What was it Superman? He said, in, in theory, that should be. That's a pretty... <laughs> You're betting all this on... A th Maybe it's a scientific theory, to, I suppose, although it, it hadn't been tested yet. And the... the Science, in general, can be can be a tad questionable in this. I, I think I will deal with the rest of that immediately. I don't really mind the... Yes, I, I'll, I'll just get, get this stuff out of the way that, that... I did not understand why the space colonies necessarily would, like, just collapse from... I'm, I'm not saying it couldn't have happened, I'm saying I felt like it was underexplained in the movie when Krypton, you know, ended, that, that that would just automatically mean that they are like, well, we're cut off, I guess, now we can't figure out how to sustain ourselves. It just... it wasn't that kind of the point of the... I guess because they had neglected the space program thing? I, I don't know. Now, the, that, that thing with, like, I don't remember her name, but the, the, the one Kryptonian who was on Zod's side, who wasn't the scientist guy, who had lines. Her. It, who was that other guy who fought with her? Was that like supposed to be Nan? Was that it? He was like tall. I don't think we even saw his face. He was just there and they were like kicking around. I you can't see my even you know, they were kicking Superman back and forth between them and was that supposed to be Nan? Was that the, the idea? Was that like a little nod to Superman 2 or something? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, it's just her, when she, she has that line about like how, what was it, we, we are like perfectly evolved to, to kill you, and if there's one thing that history teaches, it's that evolution is always right, or, or something like that. I just feel like, it seems like you're trying to get at that they are... They are evil, and she's invoking evolution for her cause. Are, are they doing some kind of, like, by, by, 
you know, by connection, evolution is evil or something. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just misinterpreted that line, but it just seems like that was what they were moving towards. And it also really seems like the, the, the idea of evolution and then the idea of this controlled, what's it called? They, they were, they, yeah, con controlled births and, and this stuff. Yeah, those two ideas are actually quite contrary to another. For evolution to, to work, you have to have a lot of babies and then the ones that live will be you know, the, the, that, you know, natural selection will... Yeah, I'm not going to explain the theory of evolution, I'm just saying... They had a list of things that Americans in general don't like. I'm going to get so flamed for this. And they didn't think about if some of them maybe, like, contradicted each other. So they're making these guys, like... <laughs> you know, making them have, like, controlled... You know, they're only having so and so many children because, you know, it creeps Americans out that China is doing that. I'm not going to get too political on this, but further, they also, jor explains that they were, you know, they started doing that and that they abandoned the space program. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If you're not having as many children, then you don't necessarily need to colonize other planets because there are only so many children, you won't, you know, have too many. Oh, and then our natural resources ran out. What? That exactly, that is, that is the exact reason why you would limit the amount of people that are being born, is to make sure that you have enough natural resources. It doesn't make sense that they would do, that they would do that, and then th that that wouldn't have that natural outcome. If not very many people are being born, why would there necessarily... I, I, I think also they're trying to do this slightly pro-environmentalist message of, you know, don't, you know, don't mess with the planet or it will, you know, it won't be able to, you know, it won't continue to be able to sustain us, so, yeah. Now, the... With that said, I can appreciate that... I, they were basically kind of turning Krypton into this kind of communist, you know, nightmare with, you know, ah, they, everyone who was born had a certain role in life. And, like, you know, there's, there's a military coup, and the, the scientist is in front of the leaders and saying, no, you don't understand what we're doing. We, our planet will not be able to sustain you know, and then they are just, no, we are right, what we are doing is to, do. yeah, it's, it's basically doing, doing that kind of thing. And I also quite liked how Zod is basically one of these <laughs> reactionary, you know, guys who are like, ah, we gotta get rid of the current leaders. It's clearly the current politician's fault that we're in a, in, in a mess. It, it can't be like the system that's broken. It can't be like that, you know, I personally wasn't involved enough in politics. No, the politicians who did this, clearly they gotta die and we gotta replace them with, like, other, you know, genetic, yeah. And definitely, when, when Jor-El confronts Zod, who is going to decide what genetic, you know, what, who will, who will be born? You, you know, it's, that's a great point to bring in, and a great way to really show the, you know, the, the conflict between Zod and El, and the Kents, for that matter. You know, you have this c complete control on the side of Zod, and, and sort of, yeah, the power and ethnocentrism versus just a passion and, and love of, of people. I'm getting all schmaltzy again. And, and yeah, just puppies and all that good stuff. 
it's it's you know I, I mean Kent Pa Kent s sacrifices his life for a dog. That's dedication, you know. It, they they always have a dog. That's I I, I kind of like that. I guess there must have been like three different ones or something. It's Dusty when when you know Ma Kent is like old. The dog in the car is named Hank, and when Clark is a kid, that's that might at least might be a, a third dog. You know, I mean, Hank. I mean, how how long do dogs live in that? Anyway, I'm I, I don't have. Pets. I almost said I don't do pets. I suppose I don't do that either, unless it's really cold. Man, that joke is old. Anyway, yeah, it it just felt like they they hadn't completely thought that through. But but yeah, to to expand on the ethnocentrism of Zod, you you have this. My people are are most important. He's he's talking about sacrificing billions of human beings for the sake of currently just these, what is it, a, a dozen, dozen and a half Kryptonians, you know, that, that, yeah, and, and again, when we find out what was Jor-El's plan, I like that there wasn't some kind of backstabby twist with, oh, Jor-El was also going to be a bastard with this, no, Jor-El wanted harmony between, and he didn't, he didn't tell Clark this is how it's going to be. He didn't, he, he, he's, it's, it's again, it's free will versus, you know, I, I suppose free will versus determinism, I don't know, maybe. But, but basically, yeah, you have this, this mode of government on Krypton where everything is set. Everyone has their role, and that's, that's very communist, you know. If you, you will do what we tell you to do, and, yeah. And it's, it's that thing of, what if someone wanted to be something other than what someone else wanted them to be? And that again, the American dream, as I mentioned in the, in the review, that's, that's what America is. Come to America and you can be what you want to be, not what others want you to be. And I'm, I'm not saying it's always true, I'm saying that the movie really captures that idea and that, that works really well. And I, I find that Zod, through and through, is completely credible. His, his motivations, he, you know, first off, he's, he's just working towards, you know, a, a new Krypton on Earth. And then after he, you know, completely loses that hope, after he's, once he and Cal are the last Kryptonians, he will, he wants to make Cal suffer because he just lost everything that meant the most to him. I, I was bred with the sole purpose of ensuring the survival of my species and you just took that away from me. And, and I, I really, I think they played it perfectly with the actual death of Zod. The, the, now the, the, that final fight is what I'm talking about in the review. That that was at least one action scene too many. That really didn't need to be a full-on fight. I get why he's still, like, aggressive and angry and such, but we had already seen the two fight, and it's just, it's a little... Anyway, the... I love that Zod, right until the end, just wants to make other people suffer. At, at that point, because that's where he is as a character. He doesn't have anything else and and that is a sort of it's it's the desperation of someone who who gave all their who put all their efforts towards a goal which it, for, for one thing is now no longer possible and for another it's a sort of it's maybe how far he's gone. You know, he, he said, no matter how violent or cruel the things I've done, I did it for this one goal. And, and you know, it's not that you know he saved up a lot of money in order to buy a car, and then someone else bought that exact car. You know, he could he could just go and do that. No, it's he he killed people. He destroyed lives in order to 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 do this. And 
well, yeah, he's he's just he's gone too far now. It's all gone, and and yeah, I I love that he, you know, he he uses the the glowy eyes and tries to you know cut these people down, and and Clark is is yelling like, stop, never, and he finally makes that decision that that you know it's just there is no other choice, and he snaps Zod's neck, and not only. Did it take so much pressure before he was willing to go to that end? But immediately after, he is devastated. He did not want to. This is this is the first time in the whole movie that he kills anyone. That he that he intentionally, genuinely hurts someone with with the you know it, it's. Well, hurts. He they they fought. I, I would love to know where he found out how he can like fight. It's the, I'm, not, I'm not saying the, the strength. I'm saying, yeah. Who, how? Where did he learn to like to do the, the the fighting moves? Because he seems completely comfortable with doing them, and that's not something that just comes from muscle mass, or or like you know and. I'm, for example, I'm not complaining about him being able to hold up that, you know, when, when that oil platform collapses, you know, very early in the film. I'm not saying he shouldn't be able to do that. He's extremely strong, and that is basically a matter of him using that strength to, you know, yeah, to strain against it, to, to hold it up for just a little bit longer. That's just applied strength. But punching and kicking and stuff like that, that's not something you can just do because you have a lot of muscle. So, yeah, anyway, it took a lot for him to, to, to kill and it's clearly devastating to him. He, he lets out a yell and, and Lois holds him and, and there's a clear... He didn't want to do it. He, he only did it to save people he, and he knew it was the only choice. But it still devastates him. That was really captured beautifully. That is, and and that's a quite realistic depiction. Of, we don't like to kill others. It's 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 a last resort or you know that sort of thing. And and typically it does it does really get to you to to actually do that. So and I really think you know. There there are a lot of deaths in action movies today, and I just really appreciate that we here have this action movie where where the hero only kills one person. Well, it, obviously he causes the deaths of all these other Kryptonians, but that was less direct, and they were also kind of yeah, it's. I, th I think you get what I'm saying here. Now, the... I also wanted to say... Yeah, I, I mentioned in the review that the, the action at times feels very similar to other... I mean, maybe it's just me, but the moment that a car was launched to take down a helicopter, I immediately thought, die hard. Yeah, I'm not going to give away which one, but if, if you watch them, you, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying it was it's necessarily good in that movie or better. I'm just saying that's the first thing it makes me think of. And, and it's just, it's unfortunate when it, it really feels that similar. And, and then we, of course, have this, you know, mid-air fighting and flying and all this stuff and, and going through buildings. That was really Dragon Ball style. You know, it, it, that, and, and, okay, for, you know, Westerners who've never even heard of Dragon Ball, I'm not going to claim, I, I barely know of the series, it's just, it just started out to me as that. You might have seen it in, you know, Matrix Revolutions as well, so even, even just going by movies, you know, that was, that was like 10 years ago, that's still not, yeah, it's, it's still too, too similar. Now the, the 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 visual, not the the overall fight, definitely not. Now, I also.
also wanted to mention. I do think that there's there's a bit too much death on the side of the, the good guys. There's there's yeah the the way that yeah that there's there's too much death of, of people. That's I mean, I mean, you know, bloodless, and you don't really see, but you, you know that people are dying en masse, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, again, just, it, it's tasteless. Now, the, I suppose I will do some of the, the terrible, Terrible jokes. Near the end, the the um, Zod is trying to convince Superman. There's only one way this can end. Either you will die, or I will. You know, Zod. After this fight is over, I am going to teach you how to count to at least two. And then, you know, it's several times, there's, there are several of these fights where Superman fights a Kryptonian on Earth and he ends it with the Kryptonian Hurtstoned. You know, just smashing the helmet and then, you know, hurts, doesn't it? And yeah, okay, so they go on a ship and, like, literally, that's almost frame for frame how the, the, the two action scenes end. You know, you've got. Let, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Non. It's Non and and isn't she called Ilsa in the old movie? I don't remember her name in this movie. Yeah, the, the, the Non and, and Ilsa go up like that, and, and Non wasn't even hurt. Why couldn't he stay in the fight? Anyway, maybe he's just. You know, like, well, okay, the, the character with the face stopped fighting, so I guess I will too, you know. If you're not going to pay me to speak or to show my face, I guess I will just, yeah. And I guess he got David Proust. That's, that's what happened. Yeah, so, and, and yeah, that's exactly how it happened with Zod also when, when his helmet got, got smashed, so yeah. Now, the, I suppose that might more or less cover. I like how even the American military get personality and get to be human beings in this movie. I mean, the, the colonel guy, I mean, after the, the fight and he sees um, Superman, you know, they, they're at the start of it, they're shooting at Superman too, you know, it's, what about the blue guy? I said, all targets, you know, and, and the, the, the colonel guy says to the others, this man is not our enemy. Thank you, colonel. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's excellent. That's, he actually realizes, and, and when, when Supes comes back down, you know, are you crazy? It was just one of your spy drones, that's all. That thing is worth 12 billion dollars. It was. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do things my way, but you are going to back, go back to the, the U.S. government and you're going to tell them that I'm not a threat. And, yeah. Now, I really loved, I mentioned this in the review as well, but I'd like to add some, some detail to it, where the... I suppose I, just briefly, to, to mention a few examples of the of how the action got repetitive, there's a lot of these last second saves by Superman. I'm not saying it's a, it's a good image, but maybe once or twice, but I think, yeah, it, it just kept happening in this movie. Him just showing up at the final moment and just flying into some, yeah. And then them going through buildings and, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the, the, the way Superman inspires people, you know, first it's, it's Pa Kent who dies and for, for a second I thought that he was going to get smushed by a car, but thankfully they realized that that would probably get a laugh instead, so he just disappears in this big, you know, fog thingy, yeah, and he basically, yeah, that's, that's sort of, 
You might say that's what inspires Clark to be willing to sacrifice himself for other people. And you see that catching on all through. I mean, when he nearly, I mean, he really goes above and beyond to save this, this kind of pudgy kid on the bus. You know, he, he really has to dive down and get back up with him. And the next time we see the pudgy kid, he helps Clark up. And, and immediately after that, we get the contrasting of Clark wanted to hit that other guy. And that's, that's really the key there. Here we have a former bully and, and on the other side a current bully and, and what Clark really wants to do to the current bully. But he didn't hurt the former bully. He in fact helped him when he needed help. And now the bully is a friend. And yeah, again, it, maybe it's schmaltzy, but it, it is part of Superman. It is part of what makes this character iconic. There is this idea of helping others and being willing to, yeah. To, and, and, and in this movie, he really does risk it. You know, Lois points out to him right before you, you know, if, if you actually fly into that thing, I mean, if it's like Krypton, you know, won't it, won't you be vulnerable there? Maybe, but I'm still flying there, you know, it's, he's showing he will sacrifice himself, and he also, he gives himself in, he, he says, okay, I will go to Zod, just, just release Lois Lane, you know, it's, he, he really cares, and he puts others before himself, and that becomes, I mean, you see Perry White actually say, and, and it's not that Perry White was like a, a bastard before that point, but there is still this, yeah, he's, he's risking his life, he, he could leave Jenny Olsen, I don't know why that needed to be gender swap, but whatever, he could leave Jenny there. And, and, and himself run far away, but he stays and he, yeah, he, he doesn't know that Superman is seconds away from, from stopping it, you know, it's, and again, then you have this idea of if you stop and help others, then things will work out for the better, and again, very American. I, I like, my, my friend who I watched this movie with pointed out that it was very western-y when, when they're standing, you know, across from each other and Superman says, it's not safe, go in the building. I'm just thinking, go in the building, get the heck away from there, get a hundred miles away, they're gonna fly through the buildings, and Superman already knows this, because it's already happened earlier in the movie, so why, what is it, go into the building? Maybe if they have like a bomb shelter, that might, especially if it's underground, but other than that, I mean, yeah. Now, the... I suppose that might more or less cover it. But yeah, actually, yes, the, the then there's the issue of I, I already mentioned this somewhat, but just to put the last details on it that I thought of at least. This idea of, you know, colonization of, of you have to, your world is no longer viable. So you have to go somewhere else. And then you have these two perspectives on it. Zod's, which is fine with genocide, and Jor-El's and later Kal-El's, which insists on living together in harmony. And, and Zod's response is, what? You expect us to spend time adjusting to this, you know, it's, if it doesn't work now, or if there isn't an easy solution, or if, if we have to give anything up, then we won't do it. And that is very accurate, and, and I think that's actually where it gets a little, I mean, not only, I mean, Maybe not everyone will think of, of American in relation to that, you know, American history in relation to that, but with how America-centric this movie is, for better or for worse, I think it will be, I, I don't think I'll be the only one who'll make the connection with 
yeah, the, the colonization of the Americas, of, of yeah, with with the genocide of the the Native Americans, and yeah, it's 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 interesting that it makes these points, you know, pro pro environmentalism and <laughs> anti genocide, how how very noble and and quaint to be anti genocide in America today. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the, the, that was a joke. Yes, the, the, just, I like how, how it sets that up and how it says, yeah, we, we, it's not that, you know, it's sort of the, if, if you have to point to something as pure evil in this film, it's ethnocentrism, ethnocentrism to the point where you, you know, yeah, where, where, where you're willing to hurt others so that you won't have to, you know, I mean, they, they could be fine, it's just that it's too much of a hassle for them, you know, that, that I really thought was a, a great point, and ethnocentrism certainly is a very dangerous thing in reality. I was a little confused when the what's it called when when the 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 the, the mind of Joel or the the thing that was in yeah when that's when when he explains to Cal about this whole thing of you know of of, of Zod, I I kind of have to wonder. I mean, did he like update that thing like right before the shuttle? Did, maybe I'm just not understanding. Maybe it was like automatically updated to his most recent memories. But it would really have to be because. Like, right after he found out that Zod was leading this military coup, he gets back to, you know, Cal, and they send him off. And it's that thing of, so how did he manage to put that knowledge into the, but, but yeah, maybe, maybe it was just automatically, like, linked to that, but, yeah. Now, I, I also quite liked, I suppose I could <laughs> go into that, the, 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 the parental things of, you know, Zod sees, sorry, jor sees in, in Clark the, the hope for the future of Krypton, sort of the, you know, once you have, I'm not entirely sure how exactly he was going to get more Kryptonians without like any of the equipment, or was that in that pod too? So he gave that up. That might have been in there. I apologize. I, if it was, I did not fully pick up on it. But anyway, yeah, that yeah, Jor wants him to yeah for, further his people, not to the detriment of others. And I can never remember his first name, but Pa Kent wants him to just make sure that he doesn't get, you know, that, that he waits until humanity is ready for an alien on Earth before he reveals it. And then, yeah, he tries to raise him to be a good person. And, yeah, it's just, it's really a good, strong, you, you feel the, the, family bond with with all of these parental I I almost wish that Laura had more time, you know, I mean you know, the moment that Zod you know, Assassin's Creed, Hidden Blades Jor, you know, I, I love how later he, you know, animuses him away. It's, okay, I suppose that's about how 
people like you know computery stuff to look today, but it really did look a lot like. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> he's like, you know what? I I'm really getting tired of this computer program. Just, just yeah, <laughs> just, just like you're you're standing at the, the, the with with your smartphone at the, the you know bus station and you're just oh, I don't want to deal with that program right now. Just next one, yeah, yeah, just anyway. I, I kind of wish we, we saw more of uh, Laura because the, the little bit she, she does get with the, the thing of, uh, you know, I, now that I have him in my arms, I don't want to give him up. And, and it's this thing of the, the bond between a mother and son and she, she knows that the only way to give him a future, you know, Jor reminds her of the only way to ensure a future for him and for their people, and you know he's he's the first naturally born child in you know what was in in, in years uh, on on Krypton. You know, I'm sorry, I know it's terribly immature, but when when Jor El said to Zod, "We had a kid, Zod," I just I I really wanted Michael Shannon to respond, but how? You and I have barely even kissed. I am sorry. Yes, the the the. He Jor reminds her that it's it's the only way to to have. A hope for for a future and it's, and and the mother bond thing also when when Clark returns to Mala Kent and and she's like really happy to see him again, and he's he's all smiles and he says I I found my people, you know, and, and there's this, she's, she's still somewhat smiling, but she's, she is happy for him, she is genuinely happy for him, but now she's also realizing she's, she's maybe gonna be losing him, and just the, the, it's in both of their performances, all of this, I mean, in, in these, in just, just conveyed, a lot through just the facial expressions, is his joy at finally find. I mean, this is the one thing that he's that has meant the most to him his entire life. He wanted to find his roots, and for her, there is her her joy for him. Her her what's it called? She's happy for him, but you also have that she, as an adoptive mother, is afraid of losing him. And as a just as a mother in general, she feels this this fear of is my my child ready to go out into the world? Is will he be safe out there? Have have I done enough? Have I prepared him for the real world? And it's just it's amazing how much they they fit into the and, and Henry Cavill's smile. It's just I mean, this Brit, I think he is, is really all American, you know, the, the charm and the smile, and, and when he is there as Superman, when he's, you know, breaking the handcuffs and the whole, you, you get that this guy is clearly, he has tremendous power, and he could abuse it, but he doesn't, and he doesn't even, at this point, want to anymore, he's, he's fully gotten to this this point where he will use his powers to help people and only help and sometimes punish those who deserve it. That guy's truck did not look like it was quite in pristine condition anymore. I I, I must say that was that was pretty awesome. Now, the, the, beat that Carrie Underwood, anyway, the, yes, I am terribly dated, yes, the, the, it, it really comes through in his performance that, that he has all this power and he is intent on using it to help, there is no, like, temporary, and, and it doesn't feel 
he doesn't feel bland, he doesn't feel like just a, a goody two-shoes or anything, because we've seen him enjoy that first flight, and we've heard him express his frustration at being alone and at not being able to handle the whole world, and at not being able to fight back, because he knows if, if he does, that will be, I mean, you know, yeah, if, 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 if he really does fight back, he could seriously hurt that other guy, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into should you deal with bullies by actually engaging in physical violence, that really doesn't go well with this movie, because clearly this movie doesn't, at least not if you have super strength. And I think I'll end it on that. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.